So I can even explain why Steve Urkel worked. Mm -hmm. I remember I watched Family Matters, just like you probably as a kid who got the TV guide and I watched mm -hmm. anything, right? I'd right. give it a shot. Right. And I remember I watched it on a night, as a matter of fact, when Mike Tyson was going to fight Frank Bruno. Okay. That was a Friday night fight. Normally okay. fights were on Saturday nights. And I was like, man, this show ain't funny. <laughs> right? And so then my dad got home and time was like, and now it's time to watch the fight. Right, right. The fight. And then like weeks later, I got an audition to be mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. So you obviously look at it differently. Yeah. And now now you, it's you hilarious. Be on it. No, not no. necessarily hilarious. You're just happy to get the opportunity to yeah. be right. on TV. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But I still knew this was that show that wasn't as funny as the Cosby show at the time. Mm -hmm. Dun, dun, dun. I said it. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> right. But what, what happened is when you would get these shows, all the writing staff, they were all white. Mm -hmm. And then the, the cast was all black. Mm -hmm. So Norman Lear and his team were probably the best at mitigating the cultural differences between the writing room, writer's room mm -hmm. and the stage mm -hmm. and still coming up with magic. A lot of places, that was a failed experiment. Yeah. So I would even look at older episodes before I even got to Family Matters. There's 12 episodes I'm not in. Aren't you in episode six on a walk-on? I came, no, I came in episode 12. Right, but wasn't there, a, wasn't an earlier episode that that aired? Because this, this is what's interesting. I, I was looking at the first season and... Like when you watch it in order, right? You get to episode six and you walk on. Yes. But there's no, you walk on and, and clear, uh, Carl, okay, Carl let me knows you. That. Oh, let me explain Okay, my, my, bad, my, bad, no, my no, bad, my bad, my bad. No, 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 it's good, it's right, good. Right. So what they did was, um, okay, let me finish, bring me back to that. I want to finish my, mm. my, 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 my earlier point. So there's even an episode, an early episode where Telma Hopkins comes in the door mm -hmm. after like a long day of work and she's exhausted and she's like, oy vey. Mm -hmm. And I look at that now, that's so loud. I was like, they let that black woman come through the door and just say, oy vey. Like right. that was her exhaustion right. for the day. <laughs> right. Back then, you didn't question your writers too mm. heavily. If you mm. did that, that was like, that was like, like whoa, mm -hmm. you're, you're telling the writers what's inappropriate. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of moments like that. And that's what, credit to Joe Marie and Reggie, uh, who played Carl and, and mm -hmm. Harriet. That's what they were fighting for before I got there yeah. and why the show wasn't even so funny because you had a white room writing for black people in Chicago, mm -hmm. not making any effort to right. truly relate though mm -hmm. to black people in Chicago. So that goes back to the thing that you said where you mm -hmm. were like, yes, what happens is one black show would do well on a network and then the other networks would simply yeah. say, we need a black show. We need a black family. A black family mm -hmm. as if it's something you just go stamp out. Right. Right. Right? Period. Just, so what do they do? They contact their top ranking producers mm -hmm. and they say, who can go put us together a package together fast enough? And it's a race. Mm -hmm. Right? So then our producers say, okay, um, uh, oh, well, look, we already have a black woman on this show, Perfect Strangers. Okay, so grab her. Mm -hmm. It's a race. Mm -hmm. All right? Let's go, let's go get... Um, Oh, what about this guy? This guy, this the guy. Die Hard guy. Hey, the, the guy from Die Hard. Right. right. Wait a minute. This is gonna mess you up. What do they have him play? A cop. Exactly the way he was. In He's Die same guy. It's not even creative. Right. It's like we will take the same look and we will put it here. Now, here's what's messed up on the deal side. On the deal side, I can already see they're telling each one of these people you're the star. The mm -hmm. star. Yeah. Then they call up Telma Hopkins and because I'm sure the network's like, is she an OG at yeah, this point? Yeah. They're like. Uh, these, these two are probably still not big enough stars. Can you get us anybody else? Mm -hmm. This is what executives do. They just push and push and push mm -hmm. about star power instead of chemistry. You yeah. know, and the stuff that, that, that we really yeah. should matter. So they, they tell Tom Hopkins, like, hey, you come be on this show. You're really you star. a star. You really a star of the show because people really know more of you. Right. Know you more, okay? Give me a break at that point. Boom. Right. Then I come in and it's like, <laughs> Hold up, y'all lied to us. Right. <laughs> There's my one spot. <laughs> so do you see the, do yeah, you see the hustle? Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now, as far as my character is concerned, the thing that I always love is Steve loved cheese, polka. Mm -hmm. He played the accordion. Did he eat mice? He did. Yeah, he, he ate, ate mice. But bottom yeah, line is weird. He, everything about the he kid. He was a weird black guy. Yeah, everything that. about him was white and weird. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it made him as a character easy to write for the writers. They were excited now. Like they were hyped now. They were like, oh. A bl finally, blurs didn't exist yeah. in the mainstream. There was no finally, representation. Finally, we got yeah. something we can write for. Right. And mm -hmm. then just, you know, now this is where I will tip my hat a little bit. Just as a credit to myself, 
I would find a way to inject soul mm. and a a uniqueness. Because mm -hmm. all I was really doing was a bad Ed Grimley a impersonation. There it is. With a little sprinkle of Pee Wee Herman in there. And my voice was already high. I was mm. calling Toys R Us doing price checks and they thought I was a woman on the phone. Mm. So, but, so I was, you know, my man is cracking up. He was like, yeah, this is just, this was my reality at age right. 13. Right. Anyway, look at it. He still, he still won't come up for air. He still won't come up. That's, that's funny. You know, so that was being able to create a character. Mm -hmm. To bring it short, is that the 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 writing staff could finally identify with, mm -hmm. and then suddenly this was my character just became something to uh, was just a catalyst to create conflict with almost anybody in the house. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's aim the character at Eddie now. Let's aim the character at Laura now. Let's aim the character at and uh, and that's that's really how the synergy created now what was born between the writing staff and uh, and the cast. Get it, call me young, go get it. They can't fuck with it, my slow, go away.